Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the show once again. Thank you for tuning in on this Sunday evening and spending your time with us. Your time is valuable and I do appreciate you tuning in. You are listening to A Kind Voice on Good News where all news is good news all the time. I am Dean Buchanan, your host, and again, I do appreciate your time. So I am going to do my best to bring a show to you that's going to be of value that you can take along in your everyday life uh, in the in the coming week. And let's get together next week and talk about it. Over the past couple of weeks, we've talked about uh, stories that have a pay-it-forward flavor to them. Then last week, I started talking about awareness, something that's important for us to develop so that we can do pay-it-forward types of activities, the acts of kindness, uh, and, and do the things in the stories that we would talked about. Because there are some certain elements that are necessary. And this week... I want to get into another key point that I've been thinking about and a story actually that uh, our upcoming guest uh, had sent me, kind of sparked it a little bit. I want to talk about gratitude. Gratitude is another key element for us to develop and understand not only its meaning but what it, uh, how it relates to us and do we truly have it. Uh, if we don't have it, how do we get it and how do we practice it every day? So we're going to go into that a little bit. and. I want to start out with a story. Uh, it's really it's from Nipun Mehta. Nipun, he's the uh, you might have heard me talk about him last week. Uh, he is the founder of ServiceSpace.org, and this story is one that he told at a graduation ceremony for a private school in Silicon Valley. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole uh, article on him because I do want to use some of this in the future, but I want to use this story really quick to uh, illustrate gratitude. I think this is a a great illustration, and then we can talk about this a little bit. Uh, And then, of course, uh, after the break, we'll bring on our guests and uh, talk more with her. And and she's a wonderful lady. She is from one of the project communities underneath servicespace.org, from kindspring.org. We have Arthi Ravishandran coming on the show a little bit later. So we're going to tie all this stuff together. But first, let me start with this story. Uh, Start thinking about it in your mind. Again, it's a pay-it-forward story. We love those. That's all we talk about here. And uh, call in if you got any thoughts. 347-850-8907 is our phone number. Again, 347-850-8907. If you want to call in with thoughts on it, uh, any of ideas or stories of your own that are, that are related, we'd love to have you. So here's a friend of Nafoon that every time he walks into a fancy restaurant, he tells the waiter to find a couple that's most madly in love. And I'm going to paraphrase a little, and I'm going to read from the story a little bit. Uh, He walks in and he tells them, put their tab on my bill and tell them a stranger paid for their meal with the hope that they pay it forward to someone else somehow or somewhere somehow. Being a fan of Batman, he took his anonymity seriously, and he says, if anyone finds out it was me, the deal's off. So many restaurants and waiters say they knew him for this, and and as a connoisseur, some of his favorite places were, were pretty spendy. So one day he walks into a nice restaurant, and he does his usual drill. And, uh, however, it says this time the waiter comes back with a, a counter request. It says, sir, I know you like to be anonymous, but when I told that couple about the tab being covered, the woman just started sobbing. In fact, it's been 10 minutes, and she's still tearing up. I think it would make her feel better if you were just to introduce yourself just this once. Well, seeing this, he agreed to speak, or to break his own cardinal rule, rather. And he walked over and introduced himself. And he tells her, quote, ma'am, I was only trying to make your day. If it's brought you up something, uh, brought up something, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. The woman excitedly says, not at all. You've just made my year, maybe my life. Wow, life. My husband and I, we work at a small nonprofit with physically challenged kids and have been saving up all year to have this meal. Once again, he goes to expensive restaurants. So you can imagine now, here's this couple that finally got out and they've saved all their money and they want to go to this great meal, have this great meal and spend some time together at a really nice restaurant. And lo and behold, their tab's paid for. Look at that. Uh, And she says it's our one-year marriage anniversary. So after a pause, she continues and says, We always serve others in small ways. 
But to receive a kind act like this on our special day, it's just overwhelming. She, they couldn't believe it. She says it renews their faith in humanity. Couldn't thank him enough. And all of them were in tears. Well, the, the, the cool part of the story, in addition to what, what we just heard, is they all kept in touch, and now the guy joined their board of their nonprofit, and they're all friends today. But the real part of this is the, the gratitude. That's the deepest and most sincere gratitude I can imagine. I mean, think of the feeling of that. They are so and so sincere. They saved their money, their first anniversary, they're going out. They expect nothing. All they expect is just to go out and have a great time together. And here, what a surprise. They get their meal paid for. And we're not talking just a croissant at Starbucks. This is a nice meal, so you would never expect this. Now, that's gratitude at its best. Uh, There's a number of other things that describe it, and and Nipun goes on uh, to use it in a different context, which uh, I I really want to get into in some future shows. But for today, let's talk gratitude. What is gratitude uh, as it's defined? You can go on dictionary.com, and all it says is just the quality or feeling of being grateful or or, or thankful or saying thank you. Well, I suppose. I, I, of course, I agree with that. That's the dictionary version. But it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than just saying thank you to a friend or being thankful for a gift. Gratitude is being thankful for everything. How how often do you uh, go outside at night, and how often are you thankful to watch a sunset? How often are you thankful for your ability to uh, perform in a, a sport or to to do a particular activity that you do? How often are you grateful just to be alive? Do you see your life and your experiences as a gift, as a burden, as a source of stress? Have you ever sat down and thought about that? When you sit back and think about that, that's when you need to understand and and invoke true gratitude because now this is i went i went out and looked at a few different places and everydayhealth.com they link it to well-being gratitude is linked to well-being there's been several studies that have been done on gratitude and one study suggested that people who practice gratitude appear to be more optimistic and pleased with their lives and connected to others as compared to those who reflect only on the daily hassles and on everyday events. Wow. I know that I've been uh, wrapped up in daily hassles and everyday events, but I can tell you that rarely a day goes by that I don't sit back and think about how grateful I am for the things that I have. And, and it does make me feel better. This, this is true. But sometimes you get wrapped up in these hassles and lo and behold, you start, your well-being kind of takes a, a little tumble down the hill. And in other studies uh, looked at kids and teens, and it's linked to feeling good about life, being optimistic, having a good social network. Imagine that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I, even goes on, you, Dr. Weil, Andrew Weil, MD, uh, on his site, in terms of measurable health benefits, researchers maintain that gratitude fosters optimism. Wow, we could all use some of that in our life. That's the, uh, the purpose of our show here. Good news, optimism. That's been shown to positively influence the immune system. Wow, it goes on and on and on. Gratitude. I, I, think, I, I don't think you can ever put your hands around totally uh, what gratitude does. But certainly we need to understand what it is, and we need to understand how to practice it or develop it and practice it like anything else we would do in our life. And once we do that, it becomes second nature and you view things differently. Now you start opening up your mind and your awareness to your surroundings, and you look at it a different way. No longer do you dwell on that person who did you wrong. You just continue to think about the things that went well. And that gets into, if you will, resilience, 
Uh, you know, the more resilient people, they tend to think that way. So think about that and how, you know, you might be sitting back and, and saying, well, how the heck, how the heck can we do this? How the, how the heck do you practice kindness? Well, you can think of many ways, I'm sure, and of course I can help you out. That's what we're here for, to help you out. Uh, really, it's just as simple as saying thank you. Anything that's going to help you appreciate your everyday life and things that you have and things that people do for you. So start with a thank you. See how that makes you feel. Um, so call somebody, give them an email, do something. Write thank you notes, letters of gratitude, appreciation. Um, sit down and make a list. Physically make a list or at least run through in your mind what what you're thankful for. What do you have? You have a job. Some of you may not have a job, and, and but there's other things in your lives that you do have that you're thankful for. All of us have some sort of connection, whether it be loved ones, uh, significant others, close family. That's always something to be thankful for. You have a network of people. So... You can't sit there and say, I don't have anything, because you do. So let's start practicing that, and you're going to find that you're going to be able to see things in a different light, and you're going to be able to perform random acts of kindness, as we talk about on this show. You're going to be able to see the opportunities, because as I said last week, if you're you're wrapped up in your uh, in your negative world, or if you're wrapped up in your own world of sorts, whether it's your phone or whether it's your own stresses, how in the world will you be able to identify an opportunity to perform a random a random act of kindness? You really can't. It's really difficult. Not saying impossible, but it's a little bit difficult. So. That kind of helps us go into um, our upcoming guest after the break. Like I said, I've got Arthi Ravishandran from KindSpring.org. We're going to talk more about gratitude with her. She just can't wait to start talking about that. She's going to give you some more insight on it. She's also going to give you a challenge on it. So stand by for that. We'll come back. We'll bring her on. And then later in the show, I've got some more stories for you. And if you want to call in during any time, any part of the show, and share your ideas and stories, feel free. 347-850-8907 is the phone number. We're going to take a quick break and come right back with our guest. Sit tight. We'll see you. A kind voice is a call-in line that lives upstream from depression hotlines. You don't need to be experiencing a crisis to call us. Our volunteers take calls on a book you read, a movie or game you saw, or just about anything you'd like to discuss. Call 800-876-2399 to speak with a kind voice. Our volunteers aren't professional counselors. They're kind voices who are here for you. Call 800-876-2399 or visit us at akindvoice.org. Okay, hello, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. You are listening to A Kind Voice Radio. This is A Kind Voice on Good News. A Kind Voice is an organization uh, to make the world a kinder place. Our mission is to make the world a kinder, more connected place, one conversation at a time. And in our case on this show, one kind deed at a time. Our call-in number is 347-850-8907. If you're not calling in on the live show and you're listening to the archive version, you can still call in and speak with somebody and talk about anything you want, anything you hear on the show or anything that's on your mind. That's what we're here for, seven days a week, 
9 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. The number is 800-876-2399. And again, you're listening to A Kind Voice on Good News. I am your host, Dean Buchanan. Up next, we have, as I promised, a volunteer from kindspring.org. And she's coming on, like I said, to talk to us about gratitude as well as all the other wonderful things they're doing at kindspring.org. And she can explain it a lot better than I can, and that's why I have her here. Her name, Arthi Ravi Sandran. Arthi, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Dean. It's really nice to um, to be a part of such a great program. I'm uh, really, really blessed and feel grateful for having had you reached out to us. Oh, uh, I kind of feel the same way, and you guys, uh, you guys are rather large, so I'm, I'm, I'm at your behest. How can we help? <laughs> no, well, I, I appreciate was, having you on. Yeah, no, it was, um, it was just a really beautiful introduction, and I really love the, um, the theme of gratitude as it relates to kindness, because um, really, I think gratitude, gratitude and kindness are sort of two sides of the same coin. Very um, important. Yeah, very, very important um, and really important to sort of develop, I think, for all of us to sort of develop the ability to um, to consistently look at what we have in our life and feel grateful for that which we do have. Um, and, you know, this morning I was just um, on the Kind Spring website and as a volunteer I um, help to edit stories and I um, help to put together the a weekly newsletter that goes out to uh, our community of incredible um, kindness warriors as we call them um, uh, who are all sort of submitting stories of kindness random acts of kindness that they do uh, and sharing sharing a sort of a global community of, of, of connection and kindness um, and I, I was on the site this morning just looking through a few stories, and uh, one story was just so touching, and I wanted to share it. Sure, it really relates, by all means. It relates very closely to the theme of gratitude for the show today. Um, a man had written in saying, talking about um, his childhood, saying when he was younger, uh, he spent some time every week, every weekend with a neighbor um, and would just, you know, go over to his house and, and chat. And this neighbor was um, a bit older and I think had, it was alone in the, in the house. And, um, you know, he was young and he didn't have much going on, so he, they would just chat for a while and the neighbor um, ended up teaching him some carpentry and woodworking skills. And um, I think they would just, you know, spend time together. Um, and then And then this boy ended up leaving home and um, moving to a different city and life sort of as it does took its course and he was very busy with his work and his family um, and then one day he gets a call from his mother saying that his neighbor his, this neighbor had passed away and at first uh, this man's response was surprised because he thought that the neighbor had actually passed away years ago so he was kind of shocked and, and then a little troubled that you know, he didn't hadn't kept touch, in touch with this man, and you know didn't really know what was going on with his life. Um, right. So you know, with without even thinking about it, he says, you know, Mom, I'm, I'll be there tomorrow. I, I want to be there for the funeral. So he flies home, um, and they they go to the funeral, and nobody really shows up to the funeral. It's a quiet ceremony. This neighbor didn't have a lot of friends or a lot of family. Um, and I, I can imagine how sad that must have been just to be, you know, one of the very few people at this funeral. Um, and then they stop at the neighbor's house on their way home, and this man kind of just takes a breath and is thinking about all of the memories he had of just spending these afternoons with this older man and learning from him and uh, just creating that connection. Right. And, uh, and so... You know, he walks in the door just to sort of relive that moment and just to kind of breathe it in um, before he flies back home. And he's looking around and he realizes that this box is missing. Um, and he said, you know, Mom, where's where's that small box that was on the table? And his mom's like, well, I don't know. I don't know what box you're talking about. And he said, well, I always wondered what was in that box. And I always ask him. And he said, Oh, it's the most precious thing in the world to me, and that was 
that was the answer every time. And uh, I wonder who took the box. And his mom said, you know, I don't know. Maybe a family member took the box. Um, so he was a bit troubled about the box and ended up, you know, going back home. And, and again, after a couple of weeks, life sort of took took its course um, until one afternoon he comes home and he receives a FedEx message um, on his, you know, on his doorstep. And he, he goes to pick up this mysterious package that he gets in the mail. And so he opens the package and it's a small wooden box um, with a note on it saying, you know, please deliver to, I forgot this man's name, but please deliver to this man. Um, and so he opens the box and all of, the only thing that was in a, the box was a note that said, um, dear so-and-so, thank you so much for your time. It, it was the most precious, precious thing in the world to me. Um, and it was wow. completely mind blowing to re- yeah. you know, to receive that, and then you know immediately he goes home and calls his assistant and cancels work for a couple days, and his assistant says why, and he said, well, I you know I think it's time that I spend I need to spend time with my kids. Um, so mm. even and you know when we think about random acts of kindness, a lot of the times I think we think about things that we have to actively do or things we need to actively give. But I think that um, something as as uh, as simple as time um, is so meaningful. And I love this story because it showed the beauty of kindness um, and then the beauty of gratitude as well. Because I think this man was clearly um, felt so much gratitude for those afternoons and was very yeah. grateful for those hours spent. And on the flip side, you know, this young boy, he had no idea um, and really realized when he did find out um, about this man's passing and did receive that letter and was so blown away by receiving the box, took back, took a step back, and just by that simple action of saying, you know, I want to spend time with my kids. Like, he developed his own gratitude, is. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that's, that's that is a great story, and, and and sometimes it's it's fortunate, but it's unfortunate that those types of tragic events uh, lead to that. It is good because we do finally, you know, take that step back because that is a common thing. I think when when people pass, certainly it brings the family together, and you uh, you forget about a lot of your stresses and everyday problems that you have, and and you hug and you you get you get pretty tight. Um, learning to do that in our everyday lives that's that's what we're here talking about today is is trying to do that without having to have a traumatic event but you're um on your site you got before we go into the uh, the gratitude piece which i think is the one of the coolest things you guys got going your site you talk you you have these stories like you said you logged in you saw this story people can join your site if you will i guess they you, you become members of course because i am a member of your site by the way i love it i loved receiving your emails and people can post stories is that correct and how does that work with the uh, the responses and the smiles and things yeah so you know it's quite simple you can just uh go to kindspring.org uh and log in it's good if you log in because then you can post stories and see more of the stories that the other community members post uh, and you can just write in, um, write in stories, share, share your own story of kindness. Uh, it's very simple. There's just a little, if you log in and you go to the stories tab, there's a little tab on the right hand corner where it says submit your own story of kindness. And you just share a kindness story. And there's even a place now to, um, add in pictures. People are sending so many beautiful, beautiful pictures and, um, beautiful quotes, um, and and as a user, you can also, you know, add smiles to stories. If there's a story that really touches you, uh, you can add a smile to it. Um, we gift karma bucks. <laughs> Those are just karma amazing. bucks. Tell me about yeah. karma bucks. <laughs> Karma Bucks is sort of our fake currency we've got on the site. Uh, and everybody, when you sign up for the site, you get a certain amount of Karma Bucks, and then you can gift um, Karma Bucks away, or you can, in, and other people uh, give, give you Karma Bucks. And you always have, when you sign in, you'll see, um, you know, how many Karma Bucks you've given away and how many you've received. And it's just a fun way of sort of appreciating um, a random act of kindness someone has done. You know, if you think somebody's done a really cool random act of kindness um, that really touches you, you can add a couple of smiles to their story, you give them a, some Karma Bucks, and, um, 
and then you receive them as well. And it's just this fun exchange we have with the community on the site that's, that's really quite popular, actually. So. Uh, it is popular because it looks like you guys have about, you're over 27,000 members. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are. Wow, that's the current. I'm just looking yep, at 27,000. 27, and that was yeah. uh, about a week ago I looked at that, so you're probably creeping on 28. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you have over 37,000 stories online. Yeah, the stories That's, are just incredible. Yeah, it's great. I mean, people, I think, <clears throat> you know, what's the most amazing thing about the site and the space that um, everybody collectively creates is is that, you know, everybody is tapping into this very, the seed of kindness that we all have within us and just sharing from their hearts what their experiences have been. And, you know, it's not our site. It's everybody's site. Everyone has created the site, you know. Right, and that's what I wanted to ask you. How many people are involved with that, and and is it all volunteer? What does it take for a kind spring to be successful and, and running? Well, we have a lot of very dedicated volunteers um, that do everything from going through stories and adding smiles and, and reading and writing comments to encourage our users to sending out the newsletter to editing the story to our we have a tech team that does all the the technology the background you know programming for the site so we are a fully um, volunteer run site and uh, and that's that's the beauty of it. You know, it's not, we don't have to, it's not, a, this is a paid thing. You know, it's it's completely out of the goodness of everybody's hearts to, to contribute in whatever they, way they feel that they can. And, you know, more, more importantly, I think that the community, the users, the people who go on the site and read the stories, they're the real, I mean, they're adding the, the beautiful content to the site, you know, and they're really contributing right. um, and writing from a space of, so much love, uh, and it's really incredible. I mean, there's not, there's literally not a week that goes by that I don't um, tear up reading something on the site. I mean, it's just incredible. And yeah. I think, I think it's what's really amazing about it is it really, um, it really just shows you what we all can do um, just to make the world that much better, you know. And it, and it doesn't need to be huge acts. It doesn't need to be these large scale. You know, right. We just focus on the small things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that, um, you know, because we're focusing on the small things, it's just it's available for everybody. Um, and you talk about there's – it's all volunteer. No, There's no – nobody gets paid. And I want to also add – that there's no advertising on your website. You guys don't get have advertisers and receive money for anything. At least I don't see any advertisers. Is that correct? No, no, no. no. We don't. No. There's no advertising. Yeah. We're so not. this is all 100. percent That's what it, to me. That's what makes it great. I, I really like that because you're you're running it like a completely 100 percent commercial site. You're you're up there with the other sites as far as uh, look, feel, functionality, but yet nobody's getting paid, you're not receiving money, and I, I think that's a great thing. And that, like you said, that's a testament to, to what people can actually do when they put their minds to it and, and really want to give. Yeah. Well, I think I think that, you know, we all sort of know somewhere deep inside, and it's been said in so many different traditions and religions and communities all over the world, it's when you give is when you truly receive. And I think that we, you know, it is a lot of hours. There's so much hard work that goes into um, into this site that everybody collectively puts in. But I think that what we're trying to do with Kind Spring and with Service Space, more broadly with Service Space, is really tap into being more radically generous. You know, why don't why don't we give everything that we can for and and just c- continue working from that space of radical generosity, um, and. And I think that there's that the cards are sort of stacked up against us, you know, with the way that things are right now. Um, oh, sure. And we want to, yeah. and we want to, we want to be, as I said before, we want to be warriors against that. You know, we want to be warriors of peace. We want to be warriors of generosity. We want to be warriors of kindness. And we want, and I think that, you know, this isn't. These are not novel ideas. This is what communities have been doing for thousands of years. You know, we communities have been supporting and serving each other selflessly for so long, and there was no exchange of money. You know, and, right. and this is only sort of recent in the whole history of you know mankind. And I think, I think that we're just tapping into a very old 
old sort of wisdom of of the way that um, communities have been working. And so, right. you know, I think as a whole, what we're trying to do is just tap back into that and 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 be radically generous with what we have, with whatever we can give is good enough, you know. Right, and you're, we're trying to get off that dirt road that we've seemed to have uh, taken. And I, I, I mentioned Nipun Mehta last week, and I'm going to get in, uh, into him and, and the whole service space a little bit more in future shows. But uh, definitely a dirt road has been taken. And now, like you said, you're up against a, a huge hurdle in that when you talk about things that you just said, people look at you like, eh, you know, what's your angle? What do you want? You know, there's something in it for you guys. Because that's how we're programmed in this day and age, right. that everybody's got an agenda and it's all about them and it's all about me, me, me. How can you possibly give me something? So, hey, b- before we go much further, I just want to uh, – we're, we're coming up on a break, but I, if you got time, stick around and we'll, we'll come back after the break and talk about – more, of course. I want to get into the pay it forward game. I want to talk about then gratitude uh, and and highlight that, of course. Talk about your kindness challenge and things. And for those of you that just joined us, we are talking with uh, Arthi Ravishandran from kindspring.org. Go check it out. It's a great website underneath the service space community. And uh, we're talking with her. We'll come back after a few minute break and uh, we'll continue our discussion. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bruce Grammel. I wrote my song, The Alchemy of Kindness, after I became familiar with the organization called A Kind Voice. A Kind Voice is a community of volunteers that provide the opportunity for conversation on a variety of topics. The title is one of their slogans, and the phrase really hits home with me. I hope that you'll enjoy my song, and whether you may be a caller or a future volunteer, I hope you'll take the time to find out more about the wonderful folks at A Kind Voice. Of kindness is one that we believe. When we reach out to each other, you know we both receive. We're always here for you. We're right beside the phone. When kind voices come together, it seems we're never alone. So if you're reaching out, you know we're reaching too. Pick up the phone, that's all you have to do. Call us now if you need a kind voice. If you need a kind voice. If you got some good news, you heard the other day. Thank you for tuning in. 
You are listening to A Kind Voice Radio. This is Dean Buchanan. I am your host. And A Kind Voice. A Kind Voice. The mission of A Kind Voice is to make the world a kinder and more connected place, one conversation at a time, and in our case, one kind deed at a time. The call-in number, if you want to call in and share your thoughts and stories, talk about what we're talking about, or throw out something new, that's great. You're more than welcome. The number is 347-850-8907. If you're listening to the archive version of this show, you can still call in and talk to us. The number is 800-876-2399. Seven days a week, you can call from 9 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. If you're just joining us, we have Arthi Ravishandran from KindSpring.org on the line with us, and we're talking to her about that organization and what they do and all the good stuff. Uh, they are the epitome of a kind act or an act of kindness, if you will. They have stories on their websites. They have a challenge coming up that we're going to talk about. So let's get back with it. Arthi, how you doing? I'm doing great. (laughs) Thanks for hanging out with us. I really appreciate your time. Um, We were talking about, um, well, we were talking about the uphill battle that you guys have and, you know, everybody kind of having that that eye like, eh, what's in it for you guys? And and I I can appreciate that because every time, you know, you talk to somebody, but whatever it's about, you know, kind of take that step back or they give you the half shoulder uh, look like, you know, what are you trying to do here? What are you trying to sell me? Some kind of snake oil? Uh, you guys are true. You guys are, you know, that that's all you want to do is help others and give. And I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I was just thinking about an experience. So one of the first space uh, experiments, we call them all experiments, um, that we have is uh, is called Karma Kitchen. And this is a restaurant. Uh, we've got restaurants now kind of going all over the country and, and different models. Um, they run sort of at different times. But there's a, the, the central idea around Karma Kitchen is that, you know, like any other restaurant, you go in, you have a meal, um, and at the end of the meal, you get a little card that says, um, you know, your bill comes out to zero. And, and the wow. person the person before you has paid for your meal. So in the spirit of generosity, you know, pay it forward. And a lot of people are kind of, you know, like, what is this? What's going on with this? Yeah. This sort of gimmick. And it's, and even talking about it, Karma Kitchen doesn't really do it justice. You just, you kind of just have to go and experience it for yourself. But I think, um, one of the things that I've certainly learned through being a part of the service space and Kind Spring community and certainly, you know, attending, going to a common kitchen, both being a volunteer server and somebody who's just gone there to eat, is that the experience is what's transformative. You know, getting that bill and saying, I don't, uh, my bill has come out to zero because somebody before me who I've never met, who I don't know, who doesn't owe me anything has paid for my meal. So, you know, in the spirit of generosity, let me pay it forward. Um, it's just completely different. And, it, and again, it's like, you know, you do something for the good of others. Um, and, and there's not only is there nothing spec- expected in return, but you don't ne- you're not necessarily attached to seeing what the outcome is. You just do right. it and you trust. And you just trust that, you know, it's going to go. And, do you, you know, I was going to say, do you have people that actually see that and they they smile? They're like, yeah, what what is this? They don't quite understand, and then they just leave. Or do they just take it for free and go? Does that happen? Yeah, I think that's happened a couple of times, and you know, I think that that's it's like with any experiment, you know, you have the good and you you experience sure. everything with it, and I and that's okay, you know. I think that we just try to remain authentic to what we're trying to do, and um, if there, it's not about. It's just about holding that space of generosity and just letting things flow. And, you know, it's despite some, you know, some instances, I mean, it's it's continued to go. I mean, this, I mean, it's been going for quite a few number of years now, um, Karma Kitchen. And, you know, we've had professors from Berkeley come in just shaking their heads wondering, you know, well, how, how do you, how does this work? You know, how do you, how do you, how are you maximizing your profits or how does, how is this a, a sustainable model for, you know, business model? And, you know, we're just, we're not, we're not in it for sustainability. We're in it. It doesn't just, fit the math. <laughs> no, it doesn't fit the 
meth, yeah, and it, that's all this is about, you know. It's, right. it's about something much deeper than that. Um, so, yeah, there was, uh, there was just so many beautiful stories of people coming into Comic Kitchen. Uh, one is coming to mind right now that um, I was just actually uh, reminded of, of a man coming in, and so the server goes up to him and explains, um, explains, you know, what uh, this is Karma Kitchen and, you know, kind of explaining what the concept of the restaurant was. And he's completely sort of blown out of the water. He doesn't really know what to do, you know. And he's like, okay, so let me get this straight. Somebody before me paid for my meal, and and I don't know who this person is, and, and I'm going to pay it forward, and, you know, I'm not going to see that person, and I don't get, you know, I don't get it. So... After a bit, you know, he's sort of getting into it, and then and then um, he tells the server, you know what? After his meal, he said, you know what? I'm going to give you a hundred dollars, and uh, I'm going to trust you to give me back whatever whatever change, you know, whatever change you want. So the server totally flips the whole thing on its head because, or the the customer flipped it on its head because the server is now. Yeah. experiencing incredible generosity from this person. And the server's kind of walking, pacing up and down, wondering, well, what do I do? I mean, how much do I give back? And then and then the server comes back to this guy, and he's like, you know what? Keep your 100, and I'm going to give you a 20. <laughs> so this guy <laughs> to do with it. So it's just this, it, it, it quickly becomes this game of generosity. And, you know, it's um, – it's sort of an incubator. I mean, it's a, it's a way to practice. It's a way to, to strengthen that muscle of generosity. And and at the foundation of that is really understanding and experiencing gratitude. Um, and I think that when we can cultivate a deep sense of gratitude for what we have is when we can truly be generous. Um, and it's important. You know, it's important because that's what, that's what creates the foundation of communities and of well, the foundation it is. of love. Yeah. yeah, it is, you know, and, and it's you bring up a good point, uh, and I'll, I'll backtrack quick because I, I heard Nipun talk about, uh, you know, when people would say to him, well, how can you sustain this, and how can you do all this, and he would he would tell him, he goes, well, it's not, like you said, about sustainability, it's, it's a, an experiment, and if it lasts, it lasts, and if it doesn't, we'll try something else. Well, you you guys, the reasons that you're doing this are not for the money, which we've talked about, and it goes uh, into something that... Uh, my wife and I have tried to teach our kids from a young age, and that was if you want to play baseball or if you want to play football, you want to be a star like on TV or anything, don't do it because you say, oh, I'm going to go sign a $10 million contract or I'm going to be the highest paid player. You do it because you love it. And the players that really do it because they love it, the money is a byproduct. And the ones that do it for the money, they don't make it. Or they might make it, a big flash in the pan, but they don't last because they don't love what they're doing. And I think that's a similar concept here. You guys love what you're doing because the purpose of what you're doing it for, and it's not for the money. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I think that we, and we're constantly inspired by, I'm reinforced with that message every day by the the community of people involved with service space, by the community of people involved in the, in Pine Spring, all of our, all of the people that write in and telling stories. And it's just, you know, I think that when you tap into a place where you're trying to practice these deeper values that we all sort of know um, know deeply that, you know, this feels good, um, and you're trying to cultivate those values again and again and again, it, it's, it's, not, it's not so much a process of thinking, oh, I'm doing, it's not like an active process of, oh, I'm doing this, let me do 10 act, random acts of kindness today. You know, it's kind of more... Or let me be grateful today. Let me try, and it, it becomes more just more natural. It's how you um, think, right? Yeah, and it sort of changes. I mean, it just really resets the mind in a really beautiful way, and that's really important. Sure, and to, and to but to get to that point, sometimes we all need a little bit of help. But, you know, I know definitely, I do because you get definitely. wrapped up in the everyday negative stuff. So that's the point of uh, first talking about it and, and doing the awareness and things. But now, uh, the purpose of your challenge and let's get into that then it's a good segue is to to get people into that practice and hopefully after this challenge that I'm going to let you talk about uh it will be automatic for them don't you think what what, what is that all about tell tell us about your your challenge actually start with the kindness challenge and then let's roll into the new one yeah sure so 
the kindness challenge, um, I don't even remember how that idea generated, but, you know, we all sort of thought, wouldn't it be cool to bring together the whole community of Kind Spring, um, the, our Kind Spring community, and, and engage everybody in, the, in a 21-day kindness challenge? Um, and it was really simple. We just, um, we had people sign up. Um, actually, we had 98 countries represented, um, and over 6,000 people signed up from all over the world. I mean, it was way bigger than any of us thought it would be. Um, and they, you received an email every day sort of saying what the kindness challenge was for the day. So it could have been, you know, um, leave a note of gratitude for a coworker or, or a friend at school or, um, you know, pick up trash in your neighborhood and just simple everyday things. Something that small, everybody, right. Something small, but that's the whole point. You know, we sure. want to focus on the small and um, something small and with intention, you know, doing it with intention and, and just practicing um, practicing that random act. And, you know, it was so funny that the first day of the kindness challenge, we had been gearing up for it and everyone was working so hard on, on just getting all the back end stuff ready to go. Um, and so day one of the kindness challenge comes, and I, and I was just so busy all day with so many things. And I remember towards the end of the day, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I haven't, I have to. I mean, I was so excited for the challenge that I was thinking, I got to do this kindness challenge. Um, <laughs> and I ran, you know, and I was just thinking, if if I don't do this, it's not, a, you know, it's not going to be good. So I really wanted to take part in it as well. Um, yeah. So I was just had something to go to that evening, and before um, going, I ran to a Starbucks, and I think the challenge for that day was sort of to pay for the person behind you or something in line at the store or to treat somebody to something. Um, and I, I think my wife Starbucks. and I are familiar with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a good one. That's a, that's good, a good one, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good one to sort of, uh, you know, start with. Get your feet um, wet, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a good one to get your feet wet. Um, and so, anyways, I was at the Starbucks, and, you know, I've done this so many times, but still, there's a little bit of nervousness because you want to be anonymous, and it's kind of fun. And um, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to buy the person behind me. Um, I want to buy the person behind me a, a, a coffee or whatever they get, and I want it to be anonymous. And But you, but also it takes some time to explain it to the Starbucks, uh, to the person that, behind the counter, and there was just such a long line. So I kept letting people go in front of me in line, and finally <laughs> at the end I was like the last person there, and I said, okay, I was just ready to talk to this vendor or to the person behind the counter and I said okay listen so I want to buy you know a five dollar gift card and um, please you know give them the, whoever it is it doesn't matter who it is please give them a gift card tell them to have a great a great day to enjoy their coffee and please give them the smile card and the smile card is sort of the way it says smile you know you've been tagged by with an anonymous anonymous act of kindness um and then it and then on the back it says you know pay it forward and it gives the um the what you can check out kind spring website from there and a lot of people just completely anonymously have been tagged with these random acts of kindness and these smile cards and then that's how they get introduced to the site um i think even warren buffett was tagged with a smile card so it's just this fun little thing and it's again it's not it's it's so simple. It's so simple. And you know that the next person that comes in, they're going to receive that and imagine what the look is on your face, on their face. Right. It's, just, it's just so sweet. And I was, I mean, I've done it, I've done this so many times. And still that, that evening I was kind of walking out and just so feeling just so happy about that, you know. And that's something, that feeling is just, it's priceless. It really, really is. Um, it is. And you can't explain it all, totally to somebody until they do it themselves. You know, they, they, yeah. they still sit back and go, yeah, that, there's nothing in it for me. That's ridiculous. That, you, you can't feel good doing something like that because we're so programmed to have this immediate satisfaction. And, and again, back to the it's all about me, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, no, I I, I totally uh, relate to that. I like the Starbucks story, of course. And and that was what I was going to ask you about was a smile card. So that, thanks for bringing that up. I, I'm mm-hmm. waiting on mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to go use them. I think they're great. I took a look at them online, and so, yeah, I have to have some of those. Um, so yeah. now the overwhelming response, you had over 6,000 people from all these countries, yeah. and now, November 7th, what do we got? 
so we, given <clears throat> such an overwhelming response and so much, so many amazing kindness stories, you know, during the 21 Day Challenge, people were writing in. Uh, we, I think we had posted some, like 300 stories were posted on the site just in one day of their experience with the challenge. Um, and so it was, it was really cool, and we wanted to, after the challenge, we wanted to step it up um, and, and do a 21-day gratitude challenge. Um, Perfect. Yeah, and so just thinking about, you know, what what sort of the flip side or the, the, the flip, as I said, kindness and gratitude are sort of two sides of the same coin, and what enables us to be aware and sort of act um, from a space of kindness is also um, act and also sort of realizing, you know, what we have in our lives and having just being grateful for, for everything that we're blessed with already. Um, and there's this beautiful, there's a beautiful quote um, that says that happiness is not what makes us grateful. It is gratefulness that makes us happy. Um, Isn't that the truth? Yeah. So uh, the 21 Day Gratitude Challenge it's going to be a bit more introspective than the kindness challenge is a little bit more fo- focused on sort of doing acts of kindness. And I think that the gratitude challenge is really going to be, um, again, that people are going to receive an email every day, um, just like they did in the kindness challenge, but um, the acts will be sort of different and focus more on the theme of gratitude. Um, and, you know, anybody can just go to the website and, and register for the gratitude challenge. And, you know, of course it's free like everything else. There's no cost associated with it. Sure. But you definitely, um, you know, the coolest thing about the kindness challenge was that it was just to, you felt like you were engaging with this global community of, you know, over 6,000 people that were all felt the same way about, you know, well, let me just see if I can do small acts for the next 21 days. And, and just imagining all of the ripples that flowed from that from 6,000 people doing small acts of kindness for 21 days um, and all of the other people who were beneficiaries of those acts and received those acts and, and how they might have paid it forward. It's it's really beautiful to think about. Yeah, do, um, the, do the math on that one. 6,000 <laughs> people for 21 days. How many acts yeah. of kindness did take place? <laughs> Over, so many. Like you said, the people oh, after. We can do 6,000 yeah. times 21, of course. That's not hard. But, yeah, <laughs> no, I, yeah. That, that effect is something to think about. That's yeah. for sure. So this yeah. gratitude challenge, though, yeah, like says, free. We go sign up, and we're going to get an email every day to suggest uh, an act or, or a thought or some way to, to look within ourselves and be grateful. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. It starts on November 7th, and it, it ends on Thanksgiving. So. Imagine that on Thanksgiving. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is kind of back to what we were talking about. This is going to help people maybe get a little kickstart uh, on the – I guess if you want to, the learning cycle of the crawl, walk, and run, I guess is what I've heard before. You know, this is the crawl and walk phase of kind of getting them going on, you know, getting the mind to start thinking about this every day. And hopefully after the 21 days, it's kind of a habit. Now they wake up with, with some new outlook on life and they, they view situations differently as opposed to just all the stresses in their, in their life. So I, yeah. I think that's a great thing you're doing. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, like everything else that we do, um, it's just an experiment, you know, like any everything else. I don't think that we are necessarily attached to any outcome. It's just, you know, right. you just want to say, hey, let's just see see how this feels and see if we can um, we can practice this other side of kindness. It's so important, and um, just kind of put it out there and see see what happens. So. Yep, and like with all of your other stuff, I'm I'm sure it's going to continue to be successful. So, you know, I think we need to try and get together again after this challenge sometime, sure. maybe between the holidays and, and talk about how it went, and then some, some other new cool stuff that you guys got going on, uh, yeah, if you would. Well, we're always more than happy to, to share whatever we can, um, so it would be a pleasure. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I, like I, I told you the first time we talked, uh, you know, we could talk for hours. There's just many <laughs> things going on, and, and you're a wonderful person to talk to and, and very upbeat and, and, and full of energy, and I really appreciate your time. Well, thank uh, you, Dean. And, you know, I do have to say that the show that you guys have got going on is really, really incredible. Um, just the simple concept of having anybody to talk to about anything that's available is really beautiful. So, um, you know, well, I have you. a lot of gratitude for, for what you guys are doing and for the service that you're providing. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate those kind words. 
So we've been talking with uh, Arthi Ravichandran for the last, oh, over half an hour now of KindSpring.org. Go check it out, KindSpring, that's K-I-N-D-S-P-R-I-N-G.org. Go check out the site. Sign up, become a member, get their uh, their emails all, every day or every week, the things that come out. Sign up for this 21-day gratitude challenge and, and get some good stuff going in your life. Uh, Arthi, thank you for your time and thank you for calling. Thank you. Take care, Dean. Bye bye. All right, we're uh, we're going to go take a quick break. We'll come back, and uh, I've got a couple things we can talk about, and we'll wrap it up for this week, and we'll move on into our week and see what we what good things we can do. We'll be right back. <laughs>
And welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. This is A Kind Voice Radio. You're listening to A Kind Voice on Good News. I am Dean Buchanan, your host. And A Kind Voice, our mission is to make the world a kinder, more connected place, one conversation at a time. And in our case, of course, one small kind act at a time. Our call-in number is 347-850-8907. If you're calling in during off hours and listening to an archive version of this, our call-in number is 800-876-2399. You can call in seven days a week between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Talk about anything that's on your mind. If you're just tuning in, we had Arthi Ravichandran from KindSpring.org on and talking about all the great things they're doing with their website or at their in their community, if you will. They call it a project community underneath the ServiceSpace.org. And talked about the gratitude challenge they got coming up. Go check it out. Go sign up and go go do it. Uh, I think nothing but good can come of it. Go to kindspring.org. That's kind, K-I-N-D, spring, S-P-R-I-N-G dot org. And sign up. Become a member. Uh, just support them. They're a 100% volunteer organization. No money. They don't advertise. And it's all done out of the uh, mindset of giving. So, As we're running down on time here, uh, again, I know your time is valuable. I don't want to take up more than than I deserve of it. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts and then uh, send you off for the week. And and, uh, hopefully you'll come back next week and maybe you can share your stories from this week of of things that you did as a result of hearing the stories from Arthi and, and hearing some of the things on this show. So here's a couple of quick ideas that I found on uh, just scanning the Internet. Handicapped lady had a 10-minute neck and shoulder massage and left money and a pay-it-forward card so the next person could have a massage for free. That's a pretty good idea. Imagine the look on the person's face when they go to get a massage because usually you get a massage because you're stressed out. Well, that's going to relieve a lot of stress right there. I think that's a a very nice gesture. Uh, Another idea A boy noticed a car was just about to receive a ticket. He asked his mum, it says mum, so I don't know if that's across the pond, but he asked his mum if he could top up the parking meter to stop the person from getting a ticket. Wow. (laughs) Isn't that something? Uh, It saved somebody a $79 fine. So what's your story? What did you do? What will you do? Think about it. Think about it and come back and talk to us next week about it. And next week, I'll have another guest. We'll have more stories. And hopefully you'll call in and we can talk with you about yours. If you want to email me your story, I'd be glad to read it on the air. Good news at a kind dot org. That's good news. G O O D N E W S at a kind dot org. Until next week, I'm Dean Buchanan, your host. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.
choice to be a kind voice. There's nothing wrong with reaching out when you need. I'll be there for you and maybe you can be for me. With a kind voice, a few kind words, an open ear for when you need to be heard, a warm heart, we can make that choice to be a kind voice, a few kind words, an open ear for when you need to be heard. Make that choice to be a kind. 